this is a... St. Thomas Raceway Park Drivers Meeting for 2012. I guess it's been a few years since uh, you folks have had a meeting under former ownership and there's a lot of exciting things taking place right now that we're going to tell you about today. Uh, first and foremost, this is the 50th anniversary of St. Thomas Raceway Park or St. Thomas Dragway if you prefer. It was July 2nd, I believe, Judy, correct me if I'm wrong, July 2nd, 1962, that St. Thomas Dragway had its grand opening. So this year, we've got big things planned for the 50th anniversary. Speaking of Judy, is Judy still here? We want to thank Judy Burgess. She left. Uh, we want to thank Judy. Judy was uh, good enough to sponsor our drinks for today, our soft drinks, and she had to go to work. A lot of things changing, as I mentioned, including some new management at the track this year. Most of you probably know, but for those of you who haven't met him, Jay Morse sits to my right, to your left up here. Jay Morse is the new operator of St. Thomas Raceway Park. His wife, Michelle, their daughter, Metzler, You'll see all of them if you haven't seen them before. The uh, track under new management is still owned officially by John and Sharon Fletcher. They have decided to step aside and Jay is approached taking over the racetrack with a lot of enthusiasm and gusto. So Jay is putting together an ambitious schedule for 2012 that will include bracket racing, some track rentals, test in tune, as well as the 50th anniversary celebration. Jay's going to tell you uh, in a few minutes here just about some of the things that he's working on. Hopefully everybody got a handout when they came in, outlining you know some of the things that are taking place and some of the events. We do want to let everyone know that we are here for the racers. We're going to do the best job we can. Even if you look at where we are today versus one year ago. One year ago there was no driver's meeting for this track. One year ago there was nothing done as far as signage for this track. Jay has taken it upon himself along with help from some other people. John Hutchison from Hutchison Transmission, Charlie Chase, and many others who are helping put together uh, sponsorship for the racetrack to keep it going. I know some of you were at the Grand Bend meeting earlier today, and since Grand Bend is working on a reduced schedule for this season, it could be a great opportunity for us at St. Thomas Raceway Park to put on more races and uh, more frequently but also keeping in mind that we're going to be doing a lot of test and tune as well as track rentals. Now as far as the schedule itself, it hasn't been finalized. Jay can touch on that a little bit more. But for our bracket racing program, we will be running five classes of competition. They will be Super Pro, Pro, Bike and Sled class, Trophy class, and Junior Dragster. The track is NHRA sanctioned once again, and it has been continuously for 50 years. The only track in Canada that's been 50 years, so we're proud of that fact. So, so basically we're running by the NHRA rule book if you are looking to check out rules or whatever. Um, the Super Pro and Pro classes, we won't get into this too much right now, some of you may have some questions, but Super Pro and Pro classes basically are a box and no box classes. Uh, we don't have a street class this year, anybody that maybe would have run in street before will be running either in Pro 
or they have the choice of going into a trophy class, which is just that, a trophy class. There is a different price, of course, um, to race in pro than there is in trophy. The bike and sled class um, remains pretty well the same, and the junior dragster class, again, we will be running eighth mile for all of our racing programs. It will be eighth mile. Some of the test and tune, like Friday night street legal, and some of the track rentals may be quarter mile. So if somebody comes to you at some point in time and says, hey, I race there, I'm in the points program, we only run eighth mile, how come they're letting cars run quarter mile? That is only because the street legal cars, Friday night traditionally are slower cars, and uh, we will run them, as long as it's safe to run them quarter mile. And if it is a track rental, then they will have the choice of running eighth mile or quarter mile. So I know you're going to have some questions later in the racing program, but uh, basically those are the classes. Right now I'm going to invite Jay to come up, and he's going to tell you about what he's been busy with, and believe me, he's got a lot on his plate. Jay Morris, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, thanks guys. I, uh, I'm real excited to be here and be a part of this 50-year uh, season. Um, I'd like to thank all the volunteers and the staff who made this possible. Um, John and Sharon Fletcher, Boomer Borschke, those guys for finally uh, wrapping up their um, decision to uh, let some action happen at the track. And we got some big sponsors uh, happening this year. I want to thank uh, Henry Roffelson and uh, his crew, um, Chuck and um, Chuck Lindsay <laughs> and Mo and Charlie Chase and his wife Deb for uh, doing the burn boxes and we have uh, lots more action happening. We got uh, wiring for the track and we have a new timing system, a used timing system, about 25 years newer than the one we're dealing with in scoreboards. So I'm excited uh, to get that up. We got a track dragger, we got a full tractor, so to get some action happening, get some hook. We have uh, our glue sponsor, Henry, and Henry's uh, um, helping us get in the, the full track wiring, so there's no more green and red connections. It'll be green and green and blue and blue. Um, and we'll be using the proper uh, equipment. Uh, grandstands repairs. We we're working on those to get those uh, full out. Um, but it's, uh, we've got a lot of uh, sponsors for signage, and I'm working on um, um, a big. Uh, I know I say it, I'm kind of nervous, but uh, we're working on. And uh, the track list, Doug Cadman's dropping his uh, machine off to fix more of our surface, and we will be working on uh, the dip and the problems with the shutdown area as soon as I can to get. To that in place, and I know uh, Hutch, he's, we're working on getting um, some new guardrails in. That might not, you know, happen overnight. You got to walk before you can run. So, with the support of the racing, I got some great ideas for our schedule. I got it 90% done, but I just didn't want to run out and give you guys a schedule for the sake of doing that. I want to, you know, have it properly done in the handout. Uh, we got some contingency uh, sponsors happening where the people. Um, are donating prizes for the winners for all the races. Um, for instance, Miami uh, Car Wash, Hot Italian Sandwiches. Um, for the, I know I'm getting off topic. We have, um, have a sponsor for the track uh, champions, limited edition shirts, and they will be different than that for the winners. Um, and Hot Italian, we're going to do our banquet for our Turkey Nationals. That's what we're hoping to, to pull that off instead of having a banquet and trying to save a little bit. And also, we, um, we're pulling off as much repairs as we can to the snack bar and, and getting the bathrooms redone. And we're putting the money back into the track to make this successful. Fletcher and uh, Boomer, the goal is to, uh, if, the, if the racers support the track, Fletcher will uh, train. We, it's a two-step process to get the track operating again and then to get the track into a corporation other than uh, what it's in now, so we will be stepping up and doing that, hopefully by the end of the year, as long as we get the support from the racers. Uh, is there anybody else? I forgot, I apologize, but I want to thank Larry and my 
family, all the staff who make this possible every uh, week to, you know, and the campers who like to come out and camp, you know, it is a take advantage of coming out and staying overnight, having campfires, that's the funnest thing about St. Thomas that I remember, I love being there on the weekends, I'm normally the first one to bed, to bed at night, so, but uh, we got a busy um, schedule, I'm working continuously on making this program, I know De Silva's coming in with a Ford uh, Challenge, Canadian Ford Challenge, so that will be an exciting day. Um, talking about the truck uh, nationals back again, whole car day. Um, there's all kinds of stuff, and I will be sending. If everybody could sign up for the newsletter on the top of the website, I will be posting uh, newsletters very shortly and uh, get you guys into the loop and posting uh, winner results. And I got some advertising budget I'm working with to uh, do some to get the crowd back in. Um, we will be having some uh, Saturday nights, and we will be featuring a steak and chicken barbecue for July and August, right? So every Saturday night, you guys can uh, come down, do your thing, test and tune. And uh, the test and tuning on Saturdays and Sundays will be quarter mile, but they will be if you have a big car, you want to be safe so we can run eighth mile. I'm going to be hooking up the thousand foot uh, sensors get an accurate uh, full uh, ET ticket but I'm glad to see the turnout I'm overwhelmed um, and I you know thanks to all you guys who came and supported us today I want to give you guys a hats off so um, any more I'll take some take some questions if anybody's got any questions or we'll let the next guy <laughs> it's the MC. But I hope I really want to thank everybody that comes and supports the track and stays over in the test and tuning. I, oh, Larry, when I first went to St. Thomas there, he was the <coughs> guy who made it happen uh, for me, teaching me everything and having the patience uh, to handle my excitement. So I want to thank Larry and I'm glad he's being a part of this this year. I got the junior uh, program too. I got a sponsor, so all the kids will be getting uh, trophies and awards. Um, and the Walker family, they're going to be helping us uh, um, get things rolling with that real briefly. So that's one more thing. I'm sure I have a lot more. But... Okay. What we'll do right now is uh, if anybody's got any questions in general, we'll try to answer them. And then we'll have more details on the specifics of the bracket racing program coming up, so the best thing to do is check the website, stthomasracewaypark.com, for updates on the bracket program. But again, we're going pretty well by the rule book. Any questions in general right now from anyone? Uh, your uh, troll class, what's the break on it? How, like, how slow a car can you run in that Okay, car? what we're going to do this year, just for AMX, no, I mean for... <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to do this year, Taking a look at the overall picture, just like they said at Grand Bend this morning, there's only so many dollars and cents that come through the gate. If you look at NHRA's rule book, there's a super pro and a pro class and a street class. We basically are combining the street and the pro class. They're both non-box classes. They will be put together. So whatever the eighth mile cutoff is, I'm not sure what it is for pros, is, is it... Uh, 7.50? No, that's quarter mile, sorry. Um, whatever the conversion is, for pro, non-box, you can go right up till like 20 seconds. So, what that means is we are going to try to encourage, the guy comes in with the street legal car off the street and it's a slower car, we're going to tell him about the trophy class. We prefer that they go in the trophy class. Trophy class will be cheaper for them to enter, especially if they're not a regular racer, and they get a chance to go home with the trophy at the end of the day. So. We're going to try to encourage that, but basically the pro class, again, will become our largest class of competition, probably because of the spectrum of the, of the diamonds. And uh, Randy was wondering where the beer is. <laughs> it's already gone. He said he read it on the website. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> that's, after, that's after the meeting. <laughs> Bob. Uh, I think that's coming in already in the, in the cans, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think Jay's going to line up that, uh, and it'll be sold out of one of the buildings, and 
obviously, but we're not going to have pumps there. The Junior Dragster program is a trophy class. I know some of the tracks are going to a, to a payout class, but we're going to stick to a trophy class for this season at least. And as Jay mentioned, he's going to try to make it even sweeter because he's really good at going out and tapping in sponsors for things like pizzas and car washes and stuff like that. So we're going to try to make the all of the classes better that way with contingencies, okay, rather than actual dollars. But uh, not knowing at this point in time what our junior dragster commitment will be like, we're going to see how the class does this year. You know, uh, we've been through this years ago at Grand Bend and all, how it grew and grew and grew. And right now we're just not sure this year what's going to happen. So it will remain a trophy class for right now. Okay. And you're going to allow trans brakes in pro class? Trans brakes in two steps? Or is there going to be no trans brakes at all in that, like... We, we have to refer to the uh, NHRA rule book on that, I guess, and see. I'm not sure. Um, you, you think they're allowed? Are, are they allowed? They're allowed yeah. Trans brakes. And then what about what about if you have a delay box in your car, but assume it's not hooked up? It, I assume that if there's a delay box in that car, that's a super pro car and it should be in super pro, whether it's not hooked up or hooked up, because how do I know it's not hooked up? Right, you're correct. The, the delay box is, is for super pro, obviously, but if you get a racer that chooses to run in both classes, we don't want to discourage that. So it's up to the track officials, if you've got a car with a box in it, when that car comes up to the burnout box or the starting line, to make sure that it's taped over, it's disconnected. So I'm not saying we're, we're not going to... You know he's going to be still running off the brake. So how do you know that the box is off? Guys, you know... Guys on the starting can tell that switch or Traditionally, it's watched from the tower, it's watched from the starting line, when, usually when the hand moves. So unless the guy's got it hooked up with his foot somehow, then, you know, we, we watch for that stuff on the starting line. The starter will be trained or is trained to look for that, whether he's leading off the top bolt or the bottom bolt. Again, we don't expect a lot of crossovers in the two classes, but there could be some. And there could be some on the bigger races like the Turkey Nationals. Depends on the turnout too, as Jay mentioned. We'll be uh, releasing a payout schedule for the classes in the next uh, probably couple of weeks or so uh, before the car show. And at that time you'll know what the payouts are, are going to be per class based on the turnout. If we're under 17 cars, Bill, yeah, if we're under 17, if you've got 16 cars or less, then we'll run them in one bracket. Yes, correct. If we've got 17 or more, there will be payouts per class. Matt? Will the bikes still be able to run in pro? Okay, as long as the insurance is okay with it, Matt, I believe they will, yes. Jay and Larry, it's noticed that great enthusiasm turnout today. Um, we were talking earlier, Jay, about uh, spring cleanup. Wouldn't that be a good, uh, uh, yes, a good, a good suggestion for all these lovely people here to really, if you want to step up to the plate for the St. Thomas Raceway Park, just to step up that weekend and help out. Yeah, that's but I don't have a date, and if you have one handy or okay, yeah, that gets me reminds that. me of something to uh, discuss too. We can do the first weekend, March 31st, is scheduled, uh, weather permitting, of course, but if you guys are all welcome to come out uh, the first weekend, and if you guys want to help out, I've got lots of equipment um, taking place that weekend, possibly uh, having all this stuff taken care of, but the first weekend, the second weekend um, on the Sunday, which is... Um, 
the eighth, um, we'll be going to Rafflesons, um place to have a talk. Uh, and leave the agendas at home and come and talk drag racing. <laughs> We're going to have more info about that um, on the website within the next week or so. <laughs> That's where we can uh, indulge in the beer. <laughs> I got a lot of heat over putting that on. I, I had good intentions. <laughs> The, the plan is to replace the burnout boxes with new concrete, and we've got the sponsorship lined up again. Thank you. Um, but but it is a big job to take them out. I was there when we poured them. I know it's thick concrete. Um, so if, yeah, if anybody has a, uh, wants to volunteer their time and equipment, uh, just give uh, us the track a call or an email, and we'll be doing that this month before the track opens. If anybody's got a backhoe or a front end loader, that would help. I'm trying to, um, I got a couple of people, LKQ of London, they got a bunch of uh, shops uh, as a, a race series sponsor, or Bobcat of London, and either, either route we're going to work on a lot of uh, good stuff. If we get Bobcat of London, they'll supply us with uh, Jack and stuff. Yeah, get Jack in the front of the Yeah. And a sweeper, he's gonna try to. I, I don't want to say it, confirm it, but it's to be confirmed. We will have uh, a sweeper that collects at every event, and mobile sweeper are gonna come out and have a um, sweeper out there staffed on, on some events. They can't commit to all of them. Okay, well, yeah, 